As we approach the end of 2020 and another year of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen's development is in the books, I think it's about time we get some answers to the question that pretty much everyone is asking. When is Alpha? Just so we're clear, I'm not talking about an exact date for when the first alpha test will start, but for all you people out there who just want a general time frame, I've gathered some noteworthy information from the Visionary Realms developers in streams, interviews, discord, roundtables, etc. that explains the order of events that need to happen before alpha testers can be brought in, and that should at least give us a better idea of whether or not that's something we should expect to see in 2021. And remember, if you don't want to be out of the loop as these events unfold, check to make sure that you're subscribed below now because this channel is completely dedicated to following the development of Pantheon. On October 21st of this year, pre-alpha testing for Pantheon resumed and has continued with several test sessions, the most recent of which taking place on December 6th. This phase of pre-alpha that the game is currently in is called pre-alpha 5, and I want to take a moment to briefly explain what that means because it can get a little confusing to some people since there's no universally agreed upon definitions for terms like alpha, beta, etc. in the game industry. So. Each company usually comes up with their own criteria for each phase, depending on their individual testing needs. Pantheon, being a crowdfunded game, has somewhat of a unique approach that puts a lot of emphasis on focused testing and feedback from backers instead of the early access and soft launches that we see with a lot of games now. But of course, as the name would suggest, pre-alpha comes before alpha, alpha comes before beta, and beta comes before release. And each of those stages makes the testing servers available to more and more people, depending on the tier of pledge that they've made to support Pantheon. So the point at which the game advances to the next stage basically depends on how many players the game is able to support at that time. Each of those stages is made up of multiple phases with breaks of varying lengths in between where the devs introduce new updates. And again, the game is currently in pre-alpha 5, meaning that there have been four pre-alpha phases before it. To break it down even further, each pre-alpha phase is made up of multiple sessions, each of which usually last a few days, and this is where the community members who have donated enough to get access to the pre-alpha servers are actually brought in to find bugs and provide feedback. Now, the amount of sessions that take place before the next pre-alpha phase is released varies depending on, again, what the developers need. So then, of course, at this point, you're probably wondering, is pre-alpha 5 going to be the last phase of pre-alpha before Pantheon can be considered ready to move on to alpha? We were always planning on pre-alpha 5 to be the final. Right. Um, we, we've been saying that for years. That was always, 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 always a plan. And we want to stick to that plan. That being said, pre-alpha 5 is, is a, a, as I explained as well in that producer's letter, pre-alpha pre 5 is a, a series of, of, of sessions. It's, it's, a, it's a period of time. Um, other pre-alpha pre pre alpha sessions were, were shorter. You know, they're, they're kind of like bursts, you know, like we, we had, you know, a few days on or a week on or whatever it was. Um, this is going to be expanding over several months. And after now, the, the kind of the, how we kind of have it laid out now is that that's going to take us to a certain point. So that's going to take us to this uh, complete game or complete experience that, that I talked about earlier. There is a little bit of a gap there between between that and alpha because there's still a few things that need tweaking. So, you know, you still have to consider, you know, login systems. You still need to consider that network library that I was talking about. So there are considerations that you have to take place. Right now, the discussion internally is, do we call that pre-alpha 5 just because we said pre-alpha 5 was going to be the last phase? Right. Or do we call it something else, you know? So, I don't know, maybe maybe your audience can tell us what, what they would prefer to call that phase. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Long story short, though, there is work to be done between pre-alpha 5 and alpha. Okay, so pre-alpha 5 is going to last several months, and then there'll be some sort of warm-up period before alpha, basically to make sure all the ducks are in a row, and then the alpha floodgates will finally swing open. 
In the October 2020 producer's letter, Ben Dean also said, quote, We certainly are not going to spend years in pre-alpha 5, but we will spend the time we need to get the game in a state where it is a playable, enjoyable game that covers a full progression path from 1 to 50, end quote. And these are answers, but it's really hard to get an idea of how far or close that is without knowing what's actually on that to-do list that Ben was talking about in the clip we just heard. But fortunately, as I said earlier, they've actually told us more about that than you may think, and I'll compile what I've gathered here to make it easier for you to keep track. And much of it comes courtesy of creative director Chris Joppa Perkins in the Pantheon Community Discord channel a couple of months ago. When asked by a community member what major tasks need to be completed before the game could be considered ready for alpha, he said, quote, all classes and all of King's Reach. All gameplay systems implemented in a genuine way, not prototyped or hacked in, but legitimate." End quote. So let's take these one at a time. The first is all classes, and as of the last test session on December 6th, 5 out of the 12 planned classes for Pantheon were fully implemented into the game. Rogue, Wizard, Dire Lord, Shaman, and Enchanter. And according to the most recent developer roundtable with lead programmer Kyle Olson, each of those classes took about two weeks to implement. Now, if you're not familiar with the refactor that the game's codebase underwent earlier this year, I highly suggest you watch the video I made covering this roundtable to get you up to speed, because that marked a major turning point in the game's development and will impact their rate of progress moving forward. This is the continent of King's Reach, and as Joppa said, their goal is to also have all of King's Reach available to testers in Alpha. We don't know exactly how many zones that includes, or how many of those are currently Alpha ready, but we do know that over the streams and such that they've shown, progress has at least been made on the following King's Reach zones. Thronefast, Fairthail, Avendir's Pass, Silent Plains, Wild's End, and Tower of the Reckless Magician. Although we haven't seen Wild's End or Tower of the Reckless Magician in quite a while, so less is known about their current status. Also in progress, but not labeled on this atlas, are South Sail Peninsula, the Isle of Infinite Storms, the Merc, Black Rose Keep, Halnir Cave, and most recently, our newest dungeon in the works, currently known as Mangle Rocks. As you can see, many of these zones are currently in a gray box state, which means that it's playable, those gray boxes are just awaiting their final art assets. And when asked how much of that final art would be required for King's Reach to be considered ready for alpha, Joppa said, quote, with as much final art as we can muster, but will probably be some gray box as well, end quote. If you want to learn more about how they plan to accomplish that, I also suggest you watch my video on Houdini and how it affects their world building process. The other prerequisite for Alpha that Joppa mentioned is, quote, all gameplay systems implemented in a genuine way, not prototyped or hacked in, but legitimate, end quote. And again, it's kind of hard to know exactly how many systems that is or what their current state is, but we do know that the three major gameplay systems that Pantheon touts as being a core part of its identity are climbing, perception, and acclimation. And within the past six months, we have seen evidence of all three of those systems currently in-game. Lastly, there's one other big step that Visionary Realms will have to take in order for Pantheon to be ready for the onslaught of alpha testers. We still have to do a big amount of work on the network libraries. Now, we have that. We have that technology. In fact, it's incredible technology that people have been asking us about, like outside um, studios have been have been asking about licensing and that sort of thing, um, because we have some, some amazing tech that nobody else has access to, because um, it's homegrown. But all of that still has to be implemented, and we know that. So that's kind of our Achilles heel right now, if, uh, if we had one, is that we know that we have to put the work into this network library, which handles stuff like I'm using industry terms, but but that's that's the kind of thing that that is able to handle the server load. 
So all of there's a big chunk of that that still needs to be done. And once that's done, it's theoretically possible to have you know hundreds of thousands of uh, of collision enabled objects in the world, which again is a lot of industry jargon. But what it means is that technologically it's pretty freaking cool. We can have a lot of people in. We can have a you know a lot of things happening that aren't seen in a lot of MMOs and online games. So at some point, once this net network library is, is 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 fully implemented, and we have this power, server load isn't going to be that big of an issue. Um, it, it, it will still take some consideration, and there's there's a lot of variables to it. So I can't say you know it's not going to be a problem at all, but it's not going to be the kind of problem that it was even five years ago. And definitely not the kinds of problems I was facing you know, 10 years ago or, or, or in some cases 20 years ago. Right. Um, it's exciting tech. It's just, yeah, we, we still have to get it implemented yet. So to recap, pre-alpha five will last several months. Then there'll be a preparation period. And then, then all of you who have pledged at the alpha level will be able to experience it firsthand. And the main objectives that the developers have said they need to complete for Pantheon to be ready for alpha testers are all classes, all of King's Reach, all gameplay systems, and a new network library. In October of this year, Joppa hinted on Twitter that they were working on a way to show their timeline to help us better visualize their progress toward Alpha. And actually, just this last Saturday, Ben Dean confirmed on the Voices of Terminus show that that's something that we can expect to see in the new year. Some of the feedback from from the community too, we want to put kind of like a roadmap type thing on the on the website uh, to give you kind of an idea of where we're at and. Uh where where we're going next so that's something to look forward to because that's something the community has been asking for for a long time and i just think we can really benefit from that but for now i hope what i've covered here today gives you a better idea of where pantheon is and where it's headed there is a light at the end of the tunnel here and it'll be really interesting to see what this new year brings for the game i look forward to seeing you there but until then have a safe and happy holiday, everyone, and always remember to stay curious and adventure on. Mm -hmm.